Okay, so the next team is right up here. Come on, come on, come on. So, okay, so the next team uh, handles, uh, did a project for PPIS. They will share more about it with you. Hello, so we're Team PPIS. I'm going to start by introducing us. So, um, first up, we've got our coach, Sherwin. He is a senior engineer at Tinkerbox, and he has been very kind, very patient, and very understanding with us. So, thank you, Sherwin. <laughs> okay. Uh, then myself, I'm Gemma. I used to be a pharmacist. I'm currently a full-time mum. I was inspired to learn more about coding when I was at a pharmacy conference and got to hear about the impact software and technology are like to have on healthcare in the coming years. And I'm going to let the other girls introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. I'm Ned, and I'm, I do art and design. So it ranges from... Mm, digital paintings on the computers to watercolor on paper and oil painting. So I do a lot of that. And before this, um, late last year, until late last year, I was a teacher with the Ministry of Education. And I have left service to pursue my arts full time. So I was trying to do my art related websites. And that was when I heard about Tech Ladies. And I thought, oh, OK, so I can learn to make my own website. So I'm on board. And here's. Uh, hello, my name is Ling. And I'm a bio uh, medical researcher at a local startup for medical devices. And have almost zero coding experience prior to Tech Ladies. Uh, like Gemma, I'm passionate about healthcare technology. And so I joined Tech Ladies in hope that I could use my newly learned skill to pursue health tech in the future. Okay, so now to tell you a bit about PPIS, our charity. They started 64 years ago. They have a wonderful vision to um, inspire women, strengthen families, and connect the community. Uh, they currently have 14 centres, 200 staff, 1,800 clients, and a huge number of very important volunteers. And they essentially provide all kinds of social services from uh, early years education and childcare services through marriage, divorce, and up to adult education and training. Okay, now despite being such an old organisation, they currently have no official way of managing their volunteers. Uh, so there's very little consistency between centres. Uh, the data they have on their volunteers may be held on Excel. It may be held in hard copies. They engage their volunteers through a wide range of different methods. And most volunteers are just um, signing up for ad hoc events. So what did PPIS see as the solution to this? They desired a centralised, standardised online management system. Uh, whereby the admin team and all the different centres could access it, they could see the volunteers available for them, and they could create events for their centre. And PPIS felt that this uh, system would maximise their volunteer engagement, which would allow them to utilise their staff better to set up long-term programmes. And importantly, it would allow them to reward and recognise their volunteers that were making significant contributions. So in summary, our app had to have four main entities. Okay? It had to have an administration function, a volunteers function. There had to be some specificity around some of the centers. And it had to, the admin team had to be able to create events that the volunteers could then volunteer at. Okay. We're now going to talk you through um, the app that we built. Okay, so the admin would uh, be able to sign in. It's an authenticated system, so you'd need an email and password to do that. Once signed in, the admin team can see this dashboard. So this is an overview of the organization. It shows how many volunteers they've got, how many events they've got running. Now down the left-hand side, you'll see there are a number of links. And if we were to click on that volunteer link, you get a list of volunteers. So these are all the volunteers that are willing to help out at the center where the admin works. So if gives some top level information, it also allows you to search for the volunteers by name or email, and also by skill. So the skill is a drop down menu, 
which, uh, as you can see here, if you select uh, befriending, so you're looking for volunteers that can befriend, it would give you people who'd said they have those kind of skills. Now, over on the far side, you'll see the volunteers' names are actually a hyperlink. And if you click on that, you get through to uh, the volunteer details. So this is all the information that PPOS hold on that particular volunteer. And there's also a tab there to events, so you're able to see the events that the volunteer has helped at already. I'm now going to hand you over to Ling, who will talk to you about events. Okay. Thank you, Gemma. Uh, so I will be speaking about event management systems that we have. So um, the admin can uh, easily access to the list of events at the dashboard shortcut that Gemma showed earlier on. And she could create a new event by clicking the Add New. And this will bring her to a page where she could uh, input details like event names, locations, centers, the date, the time. And as you can see from um, the slide, there's a Add Job re uh, Requirements. Uh, this is an additional functions of this form, in which we create a nested subform for our job requirements. The admin can simply add or remove the job requirements as many as she requires for this event. And this new event will be saved as draft, as you can see from here. And uh, this allowed the admin to uh, select, edit, or publish. However, once the however once the admin have decided to publish uh, the draft event, a pop up will remind the admin that um, the event cannot be unpublished once it published, and there will be no other options other than cancelling the events. So all these published upcoming events uh, will be appear in the main page where anyone could browse through. And the volunteers could simply click on any of the events that they are interested in and find out more details and also register. So once the volunteer register, um, they can also choose to cancel registrations um, if they choose to cancel their registrations uh, when they couldn't make it on time. So however, um, the guest user who would like to register for the event, they will be redirected to the volunteer sign up form to register before they could sign up. And back to the admin side, um, the admin could manage the volunteers uh, for each event. We have three tabs here, find volunteers, pending volunteers, and approved volunteers. And find volunteers, um, there will be a list of potential volunteers that um, the admin could simply send invitations Next, there will be two parts in the pending's, pending volunteers tabs as volunteers could register the events in two ways. Firstly, they could, um, through the invitations from the admin, uh, and another way is to through self registrations at the main page. So if the volunteers who did the self registrations at the main page um, will be indicated in this session, and um, the, in which the admin can approve or decline the registrations. So on the other hand, the invited volunteers will be listed in the invited section. So once the event starts, all the volunteer status will be default as no show uh, to allow admin to mark and track the approved volunteer tabs. So this is the end of the event management systems, and I would like to pass to um, Ned. Okay. Thank you, Ling, for bringing us through the complexities of the events. And next up, let's look into the eyes of a volunteer. So this is the sign-up form for the volunteer. The volunteer will be required to input all these um, basic data that are usually required for any kind of membership sign-up. And then there is this second portion that is about their qualifications, certifications, and so forth. Certifications will be things like maybe a driving license, so that in 
when we have an upcoming event that needs drivers, for example, and the admin will be able to find the volunteer. If you remember what Gemma has um, talked to us about earlier, there at the admin dashboard, there is a part where you can search for volunteers via the skills that you're looking for. So this is where it comes useful. And at the bottom of the sign up form, the volunteer can also input their personal preference, like say if you wish to work with children more or if you wish to work with elderly, and even the location. So maybe the name of the PPIS center that is closer to your house and so forth. So all this information you can input at the start uh, when you sign up and you can also change them later after signing up via your profile page just in case you got tired of children and you want to help out with elderly instead. <laughs> so over here, once you have signed up, you will be logged in immediately into the portal but other than that, concurrently, you will receive this email confirmation that is sent to your email address so you will have to give a real email address then you confirm the email and you can log in as usual. So in the event that you did not confirm your address, your email address, the next time when you sign in, you will see this red color um, alert. You have to confirm your email address. So if you don't have an email, you don't exist. Um, <laughs> over here, <laughs> you will sign in at the volunteer sign-in page, which is actually Sli only slightly different from the admin sign-in page. For the volunteer sign-in page, you have this self-service here, in case you're forgetful and you forget your password, or in case your inbox is messy and you miss the confirmation instructions. So once you're logged in, you will go straight to the dashboard. So the volunteer's dashboard has two main tabs, and I will start to be the weather person here. The first tab, <laughs> upcoming events. So upcoming events is divided into three sections, as you can see for yourself. Under the invited events, what Ling has shared with us earlier, if you are really good or if you are just very skilled, you, you are a driver. You, I mean, sorry, you're not a driver. You have a driving license. <laughs> so they would like to get you to drive for the event and they, the admin might invite you for this event. And if you are invited, then you will see the invitation here under invited events. And after that, looking at this event name here, it's a hyperlink which you can open up to view the event details, which is what Link has shown you earlier also, if you remember. If you don't, it's okay, pretend that you do. Then it will tell you approximate event duration and venue so that you can make an informed decision about whether you want to register yourself. So over there, you would be able to see the register. Oh, sorry, sorry, uh, my mistake. So this one, you just see the event information and then you can decide whether you want to approve or decline the invitation. So by approve, they mean accept. And once you have approved the invitation, this event five will be shifted down to the bottom. It will be approved events. You will, the volunteers will only be turning up for events that are under this category, approved events. So in the situation whereby you do not receive any invitation and you're feeling very sad, you can go up there and click on the events at the top. Then you will see the event listing page that Ling has talked about earlier, where they will list all the events that are available. From there on, you can register. Once you have registered, your event will appear here and you will be waiting for the admin to approve you. So once approved by the admin, it will be shifted down here to the approved event. Is it all very confusing for you? Okay, <laughs> so pretend you understand. And then, I've done this. Okay, so at a past event is the next tab. So the past event is basically a listing of all the events that you have been to. Um, not the ones that you have registered for and get approved because if you don't turn up your no-show, then it's, not, it's going to be a no-show here, okay? So it will only be here if you have 
registered, you are approved, and you attend it. That concludes our walkthrough for the. Yeah, that concludes our walkthrough for the volunteers. And now I'll pass it back to Gemma, who will talk to you about our challenges. Thank you, Nat. Um, so some of the challenges we faced as a team. Uh, we were a team of four, all with very different schedules, very different times in the day where we were free and had the mental capacity to talk about coding. We were from different backgrounds, three different countries, uh, speaking three slightly different versions of English. <laughs> and um, different experiences meant we were bringing different approaches to the table. Uh, us three were pretty much zero coders. So poor Sherwin had, had a lot of work to do. And we also had to get used to his um, technical terms because programmers tend to take English words and give them a completely different meaning. OK, so how did we uh, overcome this? We used technology. So there were three things that we found really um, beneficial to helping us work as a team. Slack, which Elisha set us up with initially, but it took us quite a while to get the confidence to really use it properly. It was about week three when we all met face to face and realized that we were facing the same problems, the same challenges. And if we had the confidence to put that in our group chat, we could actually save each other a lot of time and maximize our learning. OK. Are you gonna OK, so I'll talk to you about Screen Hero. So, well, the thing is that we are so fortunate that the few of us, we live in the opposite ends of Singapore. So someone lives in the north, then the south, the east, fortunately no west, but yeah, you get the gist. So for us with different schedules, it's really hard to schedule and to take the time to travel all the way and to look for space with internet, yeah, and PowerPoint, I mean, you know, the power plug. Yeah, so that is really challenging. So we decided to try out um, video conference. We used Skype at first. And soon it dawned to us that we, yeah, Skype is not the thing for us because as opposed to seeing each other's faces, not that we don't like each other, we rather look at a screen. So. Later on, when we got introduced to the screen hero, now that is a true hero. <laughs> we can now look at the screen of our mentor, and we can also talk to each other at the same time. How marvelous is that? So we talk a lot, we talk a lot over screen hero. And the thing is that it's not just good for um, talking to each other from opposite ends of Singapore, say if we are together in the same room, it's also remarkably helpful because when four of us are sharing the same laptop screen, you know, I can't see a thing, I don't know about you. So it is really good that now we can just l sit together and look at our own screen and also see Sherwin doing demonstration. And now I'll turn this to Ling. So, uh, so I will talk about Trello. We use Trello for our task management. So because um, we have various tasks to do on our own, so it's very messy if we just say it verbally. So uh, we have Trello to help us. Uh, it has many great functions. Uh, like we can create different lists that, um, like such as tasks that are already done. Uh, pull requests pending and uh, work in progress to do this. So and then you can as you can see that uh, we could assign different people for different tasks and set deadline and instructions. So it's a very good um, system that we can remind each other of what we do and what we have done done. And then as you can see that the done sections uh, it's especially rewarding to us that we can see the tasks that we've already done. So yeah, uh, thank you for your attention. And that's concluded our presentation. And I would like to thank Elisha and our coaches and <laughs> tech ladies and everyone else. <laughs> oh yeah, this is important. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thank
anyone have any questions? Hello? <laughs> I have one. Nat, did Screen Hero pay you to say all of those stuff? <laughs> <laughs> that was a um, great. I cannot talk to you about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, round of applause to uh, <laughs> Is there a question at the back? Sorry. What are you going to build after this? Um, sorry. What, what, what did you say? What, what, what are you going to build after this? Oh, I'm going to build my art portfolio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ideally. <laughs> uh, there's a few things I'd like to attempt to build, uh, but I certainly need to do a bit more work first. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? No? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.